From the patient files of Dr. William Wickman, director of Hillbrook Insane Asylum. Patient number 621. Real name, also known as Dr. White male, age unknown, presumed to be around 45 to 55. Brown hair, blue eyes, 6'2", 250 pounds. Patient suffers from delusions. These delusions mainly involve believing himself to be a doctor here at Hillbrook. Delusions? Hmm. Not according to my diagnosis. Well, that's why I'm the doctor and you're the patient. Really? And what if it was actually the other way around? What if I was actually holding this session and you're the drooling patient with delusions? Have you ever thought of that, Dr. Wickman? Patients also display signs of psychopathy. Despite his mental state, the patient possesses an impressive intellect and has at least some knowledge in psychology. He is also skilled at manipulation and, for security reasons, is best kept isolated from the other patients. Which seriously hampers my duties, by the way. In the absence of 621's regular doctor, Dr. Alex Eisner, I have taken it upon myself to treat the patient. How very kind of you, Dr. Wickman. You are quite a step up from the... <laughs> professionals we have working here. Session 1 So, Dr. Eisner has been missing ever since the riots in cell block H. You two never got along very well, did you? The man was a simpleton. I was ashamed to call him my colleague. You wouldn't happen to know anything about his current whereabouts, would you? Why would I? Am I his nursemaid? I'm just asking because you did once attack him with a pair of chopsticks, nearly killing the man. Attack? I was trying to help him. By shoving chopsticks into his skull? Improvise surgery. I had to use what tools I had at hand. He's lucky I didn't have a bone saw handy. Have to use something to get through that hard exterior. Considering I broke through the bone using just a chopsticks, I think that's more to say on my skills than his, wouldn't you? What made you think he needed brain surgery to begin with? <laughs> now that's a silly question if I ever heard one. After all, you knew the man. Between you and me, I'm surprised he even had a brain to work on. <sighs> Come on. Where is Dr. Eisner? Oh, I wish I knew. I tell you. Honestly. <laughs> right. Well, since you don't want to talk about Dr. Eisner, let's talk about you. Mmm, I'd be delighted. What do you want to know? The earliest records of your very existence dates back to April 1st, 1995, when you broke into this asylum. Why would anyone want to break into this asylum? It is my destiny to be here, to help the poor lost souls within these walls. You specifically broke into cell 621 and killed the occupant, the very murder you were then convicted for. Why? How did that help anyone? It was my cell. I needed it. And he wasn't putting it to any good use. Do you know how many people they tried to move into 621 before me? That room was to die for. What do you mean? Do you know the significance of that number, Dr. Wickman? Six, two, one. In ancient religions, it means to serve. Don't think I've ever heard of that. The former patient, six, two, one, was a somnambulist, a sleepwalker. He wasn't serving anyone, not helping anyone. He was just squandering away his purpose while snoozing away. 
Besides, it was my duty anyway. I was born here, after all. You were born here? That's what I just said. I'll try to keep up, my dear Dr. Wickman. I'm sorry, but there are no records of any births ever taking place in Hillbrook Asylum. Really, Wickman? You put your faith in records? <laughs> I'm disappointed. Have you forgotten the lost records of the Lawrence administration? So many dead patients lost to the sands of time and file tampering. And what about the Reznikov administration? You never had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Nikolai Reznikov, did you, Wickman? No, that was before my time. Yes, I know. And you're lucky, a most foul man. Oh, sure, he liked to play up that <laughs> squeaky clean image for the press. But everyone here at Hillbrook knew what he really was. All those horrific experiments he performed on patients. On behalf of the CIA. Where are those records, eh? Well, many would say that's just a conspiracy theory. And isn't that just the way they want it? What did you do before coming here? What did your life look like? Did you have an occupation? Occupation? <laughs> As if there ever was another one for me but a healer of the mind. I prepared for my destiny naturally. That's what I did. How? Oh, I had my ways. <laughs> right. What makes you think Hillbrook needs your help anyway? We have plenty of doctors here after all. Yes, and have you seen them, Dr. Wickman? Dr. Millers? <laughs> what a brute! How is he supposed to help anyone when his face alone will crack any sane mind? And that manic Dr. Huffman. Compared to her antics, I come off as a model of mental health. So, you admit there's something wrong with your mental health. <laughs> Trying to play games, Doctor. I was merely proving a point. And don't avoid the subject. Clearly, your staff aren't qualified enough to care for this place. Care for the people here. You need me, Dr. Whitman. If you would only admit that. Just imagine what wonders in mental health care we could achieve together. We could take Hillbrook to a whole new era. An era far surpassing that of the late, great Dr. Mark Way, Hillbrook even. A golden age. Are you finished? No. I certainly am not. I'm merely getting started. My mission here is a long one. Such is the burden of 621. Well, I think we're finished. I do have other patients to tend to. Oh, I know, Dr. Wickman, I know. You do so. They need you far more than I do. But they need me. I'll see you next week. You have to let me see them, Doctor. I must see my patients. They need...